What's up, everyone? It's Jeremy Majors here with Majors Academy Dog Training out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we are officially live on Facebook and YouTube here to answer your questions all day, every day. No, just once a day on a Thursday, once a week. So if you've never tuned in to, to uh, our Thirsty Thursday show, it's a dog training Q&A, but um, we are a dog training company out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and we specialize in fearful, misunderstood, aggressive dogs that have uh, pretty bad um, challenges to overcome. So um, we're not just a uh, regular obedience uh, academy, although we do teach dogs that. We're more so dealing with the difficult dogs, the dogs that uh, a lot of trainers don't want to train, unfortunately. So that being said, I hope you guys are having a great Thursday, as I am, and uh, cheers. What we're going to talk about is small dog psychology. The, I've had four small dogs in the last two months and it is a record for me i've never had that many small dogs before it's crazy so it's just meant to be that we talk about small dogs because there's a difference between small dogs and big dogs and i just want to tell you what i've learned because it's been a while i've actually um, living with one for a while and uh it's cool so that's what we're going to be talking about. But if any of you guys have questions at any time, just interrupt me. Um, you guys' question are, is the priority. We'll get to the subject later. Um, otherwise, I'm going to start reading some. I got a couple questions on uh, on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and we'll go through those. All right. Let's do this. Did you bring it up? <laughs> okay. First questions on Instagram for Crystal Lex. Crystal. Just Crystal, I think. All right. Small, my small Dotsons loves people, but when they are outside and someone walks by, they bark uncontrollably. Any suggestions? Um, yeah. I'm going to actually talk about that a little later on. Uh, I'm going to answer some other questions first, but that is going to be included in the whole small, small dog uh, subject. So thank you for your question. And uh, I'm going to answer just some questions first before we jump into the subject. All right. Let's see. I know I had one uh, in my inbox. In the done, which one is the? There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. My dog Thor has problems getting along with other dogs at the dog park. We've only went four times, but twice the dog has been attacked by a German Shepherd and a Weimaraner. What can I do to stop this? Please help. Um, all right, so what I would do is not take your dog to dog parks. Uh, if your dog has been attacked twice, then the, the people at the dog park, uh, you know, they're not properly socializing their dog. So in order to properly socialize your dog, you don't want to take them to a place where uh, there's no supervision. So a place to start would be dog daycare. Simple as that. That way you can at least have a chance to have someone, you know, intervene if something uh, was to happen. But what you can't keep happening is allowing your dog to get attacked because your dog then will get become just very aggressive over dog of, of dogs. I've trained a lot of dogs that have that similar story. They got cornered in the dog park or they got attacked at the dog park and now the dog is uh, severely dog aggressive. So I would stop with the dog park because you just don't know who's coming in and what kind of dog they're bringing in. 
and uh, and the temperament. So um, that's not a safe environment, the safest environment for your dog that's already had two bad experiences. So thank you for your question. All right, five pound Shih Tzu is so frightened this time of year over leaves blowing. What the? I had I've had her on leash and she pancakes and screeches. Wow. Um, well, I had a dog, a Shiba Inu, that was similar to that, but it was grocery bags and uh, grocery bags and, and the leash. And so what we did was I would just chill outside with the dog. Um, I've had some grocery bags. And then when the wind started blowing um, and the grocery bags came toward the dog, the dog decided to uh, get freaked out. But I would keep the dog on leash, continue to walk, you know. It may take some time, but pretty much the dog will get over leaves if you just make the dog deal with it long enough um, and don't give in to the screeching and, and all that stuff. But just hang outside. Um, that's what I would do. Just need some time in that environment. Thank you for your question. Feel free to ask another one. Those of you who just joined in on YouTube, uh, feel free to ask questions. This is a dog training Q&A. Uh, we are here usually for about 45 minutes to an hour. So if you've got some questions, feel free to interrupt me while I'm talking about it, uh, talking, and we'll get to your question right away. All right. So we might as well get into it because let me just make sure I'm miss, not missing a question here. Sometimes Facebook Live can be funny. Okay. So it doesn't look like it. All right, so I just, I wanna talk to you guys about my experience with uh, small dogs. The last two or three months I've had small dogs and this is a rarity for me to have small dogs at this frequency. And I've noticed a pattern in all of them and I wanna share it with you guys. Okay, so let me first say that I have never personally owned one for a long time. So uh, all of this is just advice you know, or whatever, what I seem to think about it, but it's not something set in stone. Um, hi, Rachel, how are you? So what I've noticed, first thing I've noticed, and this is what, I, what I'm gonna do going forward with uh, small dogs that come to me for board and train. Usually I only have a three week uh, program for all dogs, but when it comes to small dogs, I'm going to have to extend that um, because I don't want to ever, um, in my opinion, small dogs take a longer, longer time to come back to balance, which means there's always a state of confusion when it comes to dogs that come here and, tra and, and they train with me. There's a, a period of confusion and there's also a period of fear. Why? Because the dogs don't know me. They usually deal, deal with fear by biting. They usually deal, deal with fear by, fear by getting aggressive. So uh, there's always a period of confusion because for the first time in many of these dogs' lives, the aggression doesn't work for them. All right, so, um, and that makes the dog sort of go, well, what's going on here? You know what I mean? And sometimes that can result in, uh, in a in a avoidant state or um, avoidant mindset, to where I think small dogs need more time to get through that, work through that, um, because I really do think it has to do with how dogs are treated and what they're allowed to get away with. We all know it's common sense that small dogs get away with little things that don't really matter because they're small. Um, that big dogs would ne not necessarily uh, get away with those things because they're big, right? So I walked into the house, I'm watching this dog right now. And there's a dog named Duke that I'm watching. When I walked into the house, this dog was on my kitchen table. Now, you can imagine the fire that was building inside of me. If this was a big dog, it would have been a, a much different outcome. Like it would have just been like, oh, heck no. You know, but it was a small dog. So it was only like, oh, hell no. You know, just a moderate one, like get your butt off. 
So in that sense, though, I mean, with all the little things that can happen on a day to day basis, you know, small dogs are not just they're they're not bringing a big as big of a bark. They're not bringing as much of, you know, as much of anything, really, you know, even when it comes down to, you know, going, you know, number two or, you know, taking a poop in the house. It's not that big a deal because it's just not that big a poop. Um, so, but, but, but to say that, I say that to say all those little things we just overlook, let pass or don't take that seriously. And we need to, especially if we have dogs that come to me that are biting people because yes, a small dog bite, and a big dog bite, common sense, is to two totally different things, you know, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't hold the small dog's behavior uh, accountable, just like we would a big dog, because I think it's beneficial to them. You know, I've got, um, I've got a neighbor that lives close by, uh, who has two small dogs, and they bark their head off at cars going by over and over all day long, all day long. And because they're small, that's the only reason why this is allowed. If they were big, something would have to change because that, that would be totally uh, unacceptable. If they were big, it would be so much more annoying, right? But we have to start thinking about this. It, it's annoying to us. Is that the only reason why we should actually stop it? Or is it actually just not good for the dog to be barking obsessively like that? I think it's not good for the dog and we should stop it no matter if it's annoying to us enough to stop it or not. Because like I said, if those were two big dogs barking like that, going nuts, going in circles and, you know, running back and forth, then we would, you know, take more of an initiative to stop that. But since they're small and we can kind of ignore that or it doesn't bother us as much, then we let them stay in that crazy behavior. But we really need to think about their mindset too so that's my point um <clears throat> so that being said oh i got a question i'm fostering a small dog now six pounds he's my first small dog experience yeah you know i i, I uh took on this dog duke that that you guys see in the picture and i just i'm just gonna you know keep him for a while and you know i always like to sort of relate and or feel what my clients are going through when it comes to small dogs and um, I have a little bit different perspective because I get quite irritable when it comes to certain things, no matter what dog or what size the dog is. I really have a hard time dealing with the uh, dogs that are in that feel entitled and or can do whatever they want. So one of the things that we're working on with Duke is just simply um, giving his brain a pause. You know, uh, he's such a dog that goes after this and goes after that and never stops sniffing and, and never stops looking for table scraps, crumbs, food and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, we have to, we have to get him to sort of settle and be patient. Um, that's how we're going to get a dog to listen. One of the other problems with Duke is, is that he runs away. Well, that's because we're not engaging with him enough uh, in, in day to day things. You know, he's a guy, he's a dog that, assumes that he can do certain a lot of things and if you have that dog if you have that dog with that mindset the dog's not going to come back when it when it takes off leash when you take the dog off leash don't expect the dog to listen because it never did uh in the house so um again small dogs are also the cute factor is another huge factor why it's pretty tough to uh keep a dog uh a small dog as obedient or um, respectful as a big dog. The cute factor, you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, it's tough to be sort of, you know, tough on a small dog because they're small, but only they really know their size or they don't really know their size, right? I know some dogs, some small dogs think that they're big. Um, so that's the other difficult part is, uh, sort of taking away the 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 feeling of you know feeling sorry for the small dog and 
dictating uh, or being able to give in to the dog or giving in to the dog because of those reasons. Those are not good reasons because the dog absolutely doesn't work at all to get what it to get what he ultimate he or she ultimately wants, which is your attention, a treat, affection, whatever. So, um, yeah, small dogs, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to keep them a lot longer. I'm going to say, I'm going to say five weeks, man. I'm going to have to start saying small dogs. I'm going to keep five weeks because to come full, most big dogs come full circle in three weeks. It doesn't take, but that's because they've been, you know, sort of, they've had stronger boundaries in the past, but when it comes to small dogs, shoot, man, it's, it can be years and years of allowing certain behaviors to happen that should never happen. That should have never been allowed. And so when they aren't in control, a lot of small dogs have trouble coping with that. And that's what I've, that's what I've observed the most is that a lot of the small dogs are so used to doing their own thing that when someone else steps in and says, nope, you can't do that. You can't be in control in this situation. Why? Because you make bad choices. They have a hard time not being in control because they've been in control for so long. So that's the key when it comes to the small dogs that I have realized. And that's why I say they need more time uh, than big dogs uh, because the psychology of the small dog is one of easily getting what they want because they're small, because they're cute, and because it's not that uh, inconvenient to us for all of the problems that they that they may present. Okay, I gotta take a break. So if you got a question about what I just said, or if you don't, or if you disagree with what I just said, please give me your thoughts, give me your feedback. Um, again, this is just me and my observation with small dogs. Um, you know, I am not a small dog enthusiast. Uh, the, the smallest dog we ever had growing up was a Jack Russell Terrier named Frazier. And he was crazy, but he was a good dog. Um, yeah, small dogs are more difficult. Uh, you know, I, I guarantee you, uh, if, if I had to, you know, tell people, you know, don't pet your dog, you know, for a week, like I did before, and they had a small dog versus a big dog, I think the people with small dogs would have a much harder time dealing with it. The other big thing, Duke, is that we're dealing with with Duke is his nonstop barking. Oh, here we go. Still working on the fear, still working with the fearful lab shepherd mix when we walk on leash or on long lead. She constantly looks back to see how far home is and lays down in a, at a certain point when I turn back to go home. Hold on. I turn back to go home. She's happy and she gets next to me. <laughs> At the park, I can hardly get a quarter mile before she looks for the car to get back. Suggestions. Wait a minute. Let me read that again. Still working with a fearful lab shepherd mix. When we walk on leash or on long leash, she constantly looks back to see how far home is and lays down at a certain point. When I turn back to go home, she's happy and gets next to me. At the park, I can hardly get a quarter mile before she looks back to the car back for the car to get back any suggestion uh just keep doing what you're doing i don't think i don't think uh you're doing anything wrong the dog just needs more time you know just don't let her lay down just keep it moving and i think you're doing a good job yeah just uh stick with what you're doing she'll see she'll see it your way thank you for your question all right, Angie, I have two Dutsons, a male and a red tweenie, and a female, black and tan meaning mini. They are stubborn and spiteful, but just as love just as lovable and playful. And my female 
rules the roost. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I've had a lot of dogs lately, or I've had a lot of uh, clients lately who who's had some trouble with their females being uh, being dominant. Um, I don't know what it is. I think they. I think that certain things come in waves for me. Like literally, I'll get uh, a kennel full of German shepherds, and then I had like three Australian shepherds in a row. And now I've had four small dogs in a row. It's like, dang. Um, so they, they, like, they kind of go in waves, which is weird. Um, so, but anyway, most of the, the last, actually the two small dogs now are males, but the two before were females. And one of them was dog aggressive. I think that was uh, not Sadie, but the other one, Lucy. Lucy was dog aggressive, and Sadie was human aggressive. So, anyway, yeah, small dogs. They're uh, they're they're difficult, but they're they can be great companion dogs. I'm not even going to just talk just bad about them. Um, I actually am enjoying Duke, uh, and we have Rufio. Um, so we took them both on a nice long walk uh today and they did really well so so anyway got a question how do i keep the small dog from running like crazy from bigger dogs at the dog park i've been keeping him on a short leash so he can't run and then making him sit so the bigger dogs can sniff him when they do come up to him um i would suggest cheers amy I would suggest uh, not putting your dog in with the big dogs if your dog runs like that. That, that could become dangerous to your dog. Um, I would go ahead and just keep your dog in a small dog dog park if you have one. You know, that's what I would suggest. I wouldn't, uh, you know, keeping the dog on leash and it's not really going to do much because it's two separate things. You're dealing with, you're putting a dog on leash and then, you know, the, the other separate thing is keeping the dog off. So I, I don't, uh, I just would not allow your dog to, in the big dog dog park. That's why they have separate dog parks, most of them, or some of them. So that, um, you know, your dog doesn't become a squirrel to a certain dog and it may end bad for your dog. Oh, you just have two big, larger dogs. Yeah, that's tough then. That's tough. Um, let's see. Well, I mean, if you try what your way is, I, I mean, I think it could work, you know, um, if that's what the big dogs are trying to do. Is he trying to play or is he just running because he's running for his life? You know, that it would, if he's playing, then... And he's used to big dogs. That could be okay, you know what I mean. If he's had two, if he if he has two other dogs, two other large dogs, to, oh, is he running scared? Yeah, mm. that's a risky situation in my opinion. Um, unfortunately, if that was my dog, I don't know. I guess I don't know how I would handle that, except for yeah, maybe keeping the dog on leash for the first eight to 10 minutes and then, and then letting the dog go. Um, but staying close to the dog. So, you know, the dog doesn't run away from you. I don't know. I've never dealt with that situation before, but yeah, if that was my dog, I'd probably actually use a longer leash too, so that, uh, you could easily grab the dog. If the dog decides to run, you know, step on the leash or something. So I think you, I think your thinking was right when you said you want to keep the dog on leash for the first 10 or 15 minutes. That would be good. Just kind of walk around, not just stand there though. Just kind of walk around um, and uh, allow the dogs to come up and sniff and then just keep walking, you know. Try that. See if that works. Thank you for your question. Feel free to ask another one. All right. My female barks a lot. My male, Boo Boo, a rescue, has mellowed out mellowed out mellowed a lot since we got our female Gertie 
is is her barking her dominance we've done the bark collar a water bottle it doesn't help it does help but not always um i do think barking is a sign of dominance some dogs are mellow because some because they're living with a dog that's not mellow there are some dogs that um choose not to bark because the other has got has that role filled you know um so yeah i mean i can definitely think that the dog barking is a sign of dominance um the bark collar and the water bottle so you know i'll just go go into why i think dogs bark i think dogs bark or any misbehavior any any uh behavior that's not you know what we deem as right but they're that they're displaying you always want to make sure that you're not just focusing on the barking because uh i think i i said this last episode but um you have to you have to go through your everyday living with uh the dog and what you're doing with the dog and decide and or have a checklist or just evaluate how much of what that dog um does is up to her because if if the majority of things are she can do on her own and it's up to her and she's allowed to be sassy what's to stop her from barking you know what i mean so so what so, so I really think, and I know because I've worked on it with many people and many dogs, um, barking is also a, a sign of, you know, th- th- they're not even minding what we think about it. They just, they just do it. They're just like, I can bark because I can bark and there's no consequence for me not to. So you want to make sure you're kind of thinking about how much of what the dog does is up to her and start taking those away or being tougher on her in that regard. Uh, For example, if I want uh, one of my small dogs to not be around me uh, or or, um, not check for table scraps or, or try and take food then I'm not going to allow the dog to even be in the kitchen. But I'm not going to gate the dog. I'm just going to continue to say, go on, go lay down, so that the dog learns and not is and, and, uh, just not being held back from it. That's a strong boundary because that's a tough one for a lot of dogs. No dogs are allowed around me while I eat, period. I don't think it, I think it's annoying to have a dog right in your face as you eat waiting for you to give them food or drop something or on even on the couch while we're eating i don't want a dog near me and so that's a strong strong boundary that can also help when it comes to barking because if your dog thinks something as simple as being in your face being under the table uh or you know sitting there drooling at you while you're eating is okay then what's to think? What's them to? What's to stop them from thinking that barking is not okay? That's what I'm saying. Something as simple as that. And here, another one is how you walk the dog. If the dog is allowed to do whatever it wants, pee wherever it wants, sniff wherever it wants, then I can guarantee you, you you probably have a dog that uh, won't come to you when it call when you call them because it's allowed to do whatever it wants outside. So that's what I'm saying. All right, so make a small checklist. You can have the techniques, you can have all the tools, the water bottles, the bark collars. It ain't about all that. That's secondary. First though, is again, how much of an assuming, how uh, how, um, you're you're, you're either building a dog that's assuming things um, is okay, or you're having a dog that is doing some thinking um and that's what you want to do you want to have a dog that doesn't assume that it's okay to bark doesn't assume that it's okay to to uh uh, be in your face while you eat uh doesn't assume that it's okay to 
jump on the bed or growl to get off when you try and get off the bed or growl when you touch his paws or all the little stupid things, you know, that dogs do, especially small dogs. So I'm definitely going to take small dogs from now on for for more than three weeks. I got to start seeing what I need to see, what I see in, from big dogs and small dogs before I let them go home. Hmm. Did I miss any questions? We do laps. I just want to teach him not to be so afraid. Well, then I, I would say keep going at it. He'll he'll uh, be he'll be uh, you'll get used to it. He'll get used to it if you just stick with it. Um, yeah, just stick with it. Maybe go at, at a time where it's less busy so he can get used to maybe one or two or three dogs and not maybe five, six or seven dogs. <clears throat> it's tough, though, because you can't control the big dogs from from uh, you can't keep them from chasing him, too. You know, so if the dog was at the dog daycare, you know, that that's that's something that could happen. You know, the dog could be advocated for. But when you're going to the dog park, you know, and the dogs start to chase your dog, there's no way you can stop the other dogs. You know, and that's partly in, you know, what needs to happen to help your dog be, get over that fear. You know what I mean? All right, guys, those of you who just joined YouTube, we just got a couple of new followers. Uh, feel free to ask questions. This is a dog training Q&A. We're talking about small dog psychology, but not just small dogs. If you got a big dog, you can still ask a question. Big dog people, ask some questions and ask as many as you want. This is a conversation. This isn't uh, anything but that. So we can have a conversation about your dog right now. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right, thank you for watching. And tuning in. I think I got everything. Yeah. Are you watching? No. Okay. Um, so yeah, those of you just joined, I just go I'll go over briefly again what we're talking about, just the difference between small dogs and big dogs, and uh if we should treat them differently or not. My opinion is no. Obviously, we gotta be a little bit more um gentle with them but their psychology is the same their brain is the same and they will take advantage just because their dogs are in th it's their nature it's uh to take advantage of what they can and what's convenient for them so if you if they're you know if they can get on the couch with no challenge or no no uh consequence from you then they will and that's not a big problem for people um especially when you're dealing with a small dog but uh, with a big dog, obviously, it's a little bit different because of their size. But small dogs are much easier to deal with when it comes to things like that. But they're also, the ones that I've had, are also very uncomfortable with certain things. Like their paws being touched. Uh, more so than big dogs. Um, them not being in control. So that's the most, that's the biggest part is... Uh, because I think, especially if the dog, small dogs have any dominant, if, if they have a dominant uh, personality, um, then, then they're going to be even more difficult to deal with. So that's what we're talking about. But I love all dogs, small or big, doesn't matter to me. I just like dogs. So, um, those of you who are watching, if you guys have any final questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, we're going to get out of here. We'll keep this one a little shorter than normal. This is about 35 minutes I've been on. But um, if you guys don't have any other questions, give me a thumbs up. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, we will be having our pack walk this Saturday um, at Badger State. I think about, I'm thinking about changing up the location. Uh, because the location at Badger States is a little, well, I just like switching up the location sometimes, but I'll let you guys know ahead of time if that ever does happen. But for now, this Saturday, nine o'clock at Badger State. All right, guys. All right. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for the thumbs up and the hearts, and we'll see you next time.
Okay, bye. Okay, bye.